If you're just joining us, good morning. And joining me in studio for our Hot Topics discussion, we have Kimani Martin, Jamar McFarlane, and Carlisle Grant. Welcome, gentlemen. Thank you. It's been a busy week locally and overseas, so there are quite a number of things to touch on yeah. in this morning's Hot Topics segment. We're going to start with the first one up, the earthquake. Any of you felt it? Not no. at all. Uh, Not one bit. <laughs> I just saw it on Twitter, yeah. everybody was talking about it, but yeah. Yeah, besides that, that that's it. That's it. <laughs> you felt it? No, I didn't. <laughs> so that just killed the whole thing, because the next yeah. question is going to be, how many of us consider earthquake preparedness, that you have your exit drill, you have your safety precautions, do you mm -hmm. even know what to do? No. Um, as, as far yeah. as prep school, I yeah, was about, to say, you, know, you stand between the door call under, under the desk. Um, under the desk. We're not in prep school any time within the last five years. No. <laughs> And therefore, if the <laughs> Office of Disaster Preparedness and Emergency Management is watching this morning, oh boy, you're not doing enough because if, if we're if we're throwing back to prep school days, mm -hmm. then when last have you seen any of their the OdPem releases about earthquake preparedness or anything like that? Well, I haven't seen it, but uh, uh, as the governor give out pamphlets about earthquake and the drills and what they're yeah. supposed to do. Yeah. So they do a little bit of public education. Yeah, right? yeah. But we need to see more of that advertising on our televisions and social media platforms. But the good thing is that they're still in schools. Yeah. And obviously, the best place to do it is in the prep and primary schools. Because I remember it from then, too, and more recently as well, as we just, we just yeah. heard. All right, so the next thing up. There are these stunt drivers. <laughs> And say it so, so professionally. <laughs> it's a professional elite that's doing it. Right. What's your take on it? The off with a warning approach that was. That's just, that's just, for me, that's just disappointing. Mm -hmm. They could have still done everything they did, but still slap him with something. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? There's no recourse, no little, in his mind, oh, okay. Yeah. You know, he's liable to do it again. Do it again. So, yeah. I, I look at it from another perspective. Um, I think had they given him a fine, it would have just gone unheard, you know, nothing. So I think I think the intentions of the police were to sort of, I don't want to say embarrass him, but bring it to the forefront mm -hmm. for persons to know. Yes, it, 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 it didn't come off in the way it was intended, right. because it turned into a mockery. Mm -hmm. But um, I think their intentions were really to for awareness, you know, I like for, when people for talk him in, not to feel like he could do it again. I like when people talk in brackets, <laughs> because, when say, because it turned into a mockery. That was open bracket, <laughs> turned into a mockery, close bracket. <laughs> but it's a trend beyond this one, you know. I'm, I was surprised that people are surprised, because even last week, driving into Kingston, mm -hmm. there was this guy spinning. He did about four spins with a you know, clearly uh, an enhanced Honda. Yeah. Aggressive vehicle. Yeah, but that's what it's known as? Yes. Aggressive vehicle? <laughs> yeah, so that's a new thing. <laughs> there is actually a thing? Yeah, that's, that's what the guy said in an interview. Is he, has an, a very, he has a very aggressive vehicle, so that's why it did what it did. You know, he had oh, no control okay. over it. And in that case, we have to kind of understand the situation. Right. You know, I mean, it's not his fault. That vehicle needs to be recommended. Yeah, yeah. Okay. we have by recommend. <laughs> yes. <Yeah. laughs> But you know, it's so funny. I ever since I went to the university and I was on the campus yesterday, U University of the West Indies, they have this building called the Old Dramatic Theatre, mm -hmm. and I might be the only person who stands in front of the theatre just because I'm probably crazy, and said, do something, deserve your name, earn it, you're supposed to be dramatic. So the theater can't be dramatic, and the car can't be aggressive, because <laughs> okay. it's not animated. I was wondering where you were going. <laughs> Thank you for that. Yeah. <laughs> that, that. Again, I speak in brackets. <laughs> All right, so the next one up now. Um, they, it's back to school time. Mm -hmm. And there are many of treats being announced. What's your take on all of these, um, particularly the celebrity back to school treats? Uh, um, I would say it's a good thing um, to say that the celebrity they are giving back to yeah. the community and volunteerism. Well, I was at uh, I was a keynote speaker yesterday at UTEC orientation, speaking about volunteerism and giving back yeah. to your community and giving back to service. Mm -hmm. So um, normally, some parents they don't have the money or the 
to give back to give to their children for the back to school so i would say it's a good thing that they're doing for right. the country and for the community and for those persons who say why them just doing it for a forward to get a hype and stuff like that i mean you're always going to have those kind of comments but i think it's if it's coming from a genuine place which it seems to be because it's their fans at the end of the day mm -hmm. and kids love when they can see their heroes you know like laughing in living color helping them out um even if it's a little vanity going on there, mm -hmm. there's still like a lot of pros that will kind of offset that. I right. think. So it's great. It's great. Uh, what about you? Um, yeah, I think it's a um, great initiative on their part. Um, it's always nice to give back, and as well as a youth, you know, it's it's sort of an investment back into them because they will remember that you know such mm -hmm. and such artists mm -hmm. gave back to me when they grow up, and that's why you continue the yeah. fan base. Uh -huh. yeah. I hear the three of you all, and I'm just going to say churches do it too, and then I'm going to flip the coin, and politicians do it too. What's your take when the politicians do it? That's uh, a different, that's a different story. A very different oh, dynamic. No, no pros. This <laughs> no, time? because listen, listen. The, the difference between the politics and the, the entertainer. The entertainer is on a certain level. Poli politicians already have that stacked against them. They have this natural an um, agenda. Yeah, people naturally even don't trust them certain ways. So, you know, they can't run from that. And there is an agenda, clear cut. Yeah. Yeah. It's on a document somewhere. It's on a document somewhere. <laughs> so um, is it possible that a parent is going to download a song more likely off iTunes because that celebrity gave back at a back to school session? Isn't it the same agenda? I mean, it's all a part I mean, of the image industry. Yeah, but I think it, it for artists, it comes from a genuine place. Because you know, they, a lot of them grew up in similar situations. So why wouldn't you want to give back? you know, know that you're in a better position. Okay. That's, that's I'm going to leave it there. <laughs> if I was reading Tijon and his brothers, it would have said exit stage left. <laughs> All right, the next one up. There are uh, uh, some rankings, some very important rankings, I believe, have been coming out for the University of the West Indies. Mm -hmm. The latest one is the 32nd best university in Latin America and the Caribbean. And no cynical person at home, there are not 33 universities in the Latin American Caribbean, <laughs> so there are hundreds. Um, you're a UTEC graduate, no. you're a knight? No. No? I'm UTEC, but not <laughs> graduate. Not, not yeah. And what about <laughs> you? You so you're a Pelican. Okay. Uh, good news, important yeah. news, or it's neither here nor there? It's a good, it's a good um, thing to say that out of 150 countries, we rank 32nd, moving down from 30 seven last year mm -hmm. so i would say that our universities and colleges are moving in the right direction to yeah. improve our education system mm -hmm. where we can have a first or a world-class education in our country right and by the way just for the record ua is the only university of that nature which spans the entire territory so it's in my book it's just the best one um of the listing that we had seen yeah, because of you that. went to ua yeah, but okay, I was just to UTEC, so, oh, you know, okay, okay. I'm the best of okay, both worlds. Okay, I trust you, I trust you, I trust you. I'm being balanced, I'm being balanced. <laughs> All right, now, there, speaking about the university and an issue that has become public about a particular lecturer being dismissed because it is alleged that information of a prior medical history is now available to them. I'm going to try and just be, be delicate as well as considerate. Should it be the case that someone having triumphed a medical condition and is now deemed um, fully functional and capable should be penalized not because of a recurrence or an issue in the present, but the knowledge about it having happened in the past? Um, I think he, there should have been a discussion had with him mm -hmm. um, about the entire situation, you know, without as against he just seeing an email once he got to Jamaica that, you know, they took the job. Well, that's how it was done? Yeah. yeah. That's, that's, that's um, cool. That's really yeah. unprofessional, I think. Because yeah. um, it's, it's as if to say he, he lied about it when he did provide all his documentations. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think that the university leaked his information per se. Maybe someone else knew about it and saw that he was coming in and said, hey, mm -hmm. We don't need this guy here, but I think a discussion could have been had. They before. could have been handled differently. Uh, yeah. But all right, so it could have been handled differently. I agree. But do you believe, based mm -hmm. on what is available publicly, would you suggest that there is cause for dismissal or for for um, withdrawing the offer? Um, I haven't really seen the, the specifics. Is it out there that he's had issues at work, or is it that 
there's no um, discrepancies on, on his part. Well, my information is that there's no current discrepancies. Right. But there's a past. There's a past, right. In my, in my opinion, because um, you know, I am a mental health advocate, I have my own uh, mental health issues myself, but then it's, it, it's something you can't really expect people to, to give you a password necessarily. But mm -hmm. when we're talking about professionalism, yeah. if there's no current and it's just, it's just like if somebody comes in with diabetes. And they're handling it. And they're handling it and yeah. they're taking the insulin, they're not dropping down at work, etc. You know, right. um, I just think it would be fair and more just and professional yeah. to, you know, keep him on and just monitor him. You know, if it is that they weren't aware of work out a compromise. Or, yeah. well, you, I, I, which is why I, I don't mind the reference to diabetes. There are many illnesses, mm -hmm. mental illnesses being among the suite of illnesses. And yeah. there are treatments and, mm -hmm. and interventions. Yeah. And if they are being successfully managed, we're all normal. Mm -hmm. Your thoughts? Because um, in the article, he also said that he sent reports from his previous jobs mm -hmm. to them. So um, you really should have do a proper background check or screening right. to see if that you maybe get out at the students or so forth and, and then call him before so mm -hmm. that um, when he's on his way to Jamaica then yeah. you see the email that he's terminating. It's cool. Yeah. Yeah. The, the impression given is that when the Wi-Fi came back on, so did the email. <laughs> <All right. laughs> That's crazy. No, another thing that we spent some time talking about this morning, which I think is, um, I, I think so far, Many people may not yet understand the, the, the seriousness of it. We've had mm -hmm. these wildfires burning mm -hmm. all across the world. We have had a touch of it this summer mm -hmm. with a higher, the, the highest number of reported bushfires in Jamaica wow. during the summer period. And we saw what happened in Flagermans in St. Elizabeth. Now, over 21,000 square miles of forests in Siberia alone have been burning since July, which is about five times the size of Jamaica. The entire oh. island of Jamaica fits into that era five times. Are we, well, let me ask each of you, starting at the end, climate change, when you hear that, those two words, what comes to mind? Uh, climate, um, to, prepare, to better prepare for environmental changes. Mm -hmm. As, as you see, um, the the bushes uh, when it's hot, they it can cause um, fire to right. to 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 burn um, bushes or so forth. Yeah, well, you say bush, I say forest and <laughs> ecosystem <laughs> and, and, and my my oxygen for tomorrow. Um, in terms of, the, let me ask you also on climate change. Do you feel that there's something as an individual mm -hmm. you can or should do? Um, to, in terms of responding to this big issue, which is bigger than any individual. Yeah, I mean, as humans, we, we only just came on the planet just a couple of years ago. Um, the planet has been doing this thing for a very long time, um, but yet, despite our very small and oftentimes, in the grand scheme of things, insignificant input, we've done a lot of damage yeah. because of our intelligence and the way we don't adapt to our environment now, we adapt our environment to us, mm -hmm. which is the problem. So there are definitely ways, um, but it has to be on a mass scale. It can't be one country here and then the other country. It's just, it's not going to work. So it's going to take a, a concerted global effort, which is the problem. Right. And uh, do you believe, in light of what both of our colleagues have said, mm -hmm. do you believe that in Jamaica, as a people, as a public, we are conscious enough that this impending crisis is here and there are things that should be done now to ameliorate it? Um, I think we are, in term, especially the youth, we are the most aware of it right now, mm -hmm. um, as against previous years and the other next generation, etc. Um, but there's still a lot more that needs to be done. I think there should be a lot more mass education of the implications of what we're doing um, to the environment, you know, what happens if we do this again so we don't do that. And it's clear to see that the world is coming to an end. So, oh my God. <laughs> I'm still, joking, but, um, you know, uh, yeah, but we need to take it serious. Yeah, we need to take it serious, because it's not a, it's not a joke. Not a joke. You know, they, we need to take it serious, but the world is coming to an end is, is, is always something that jars everybody's consciousness. Yeah. I, I, you, might, you, you may all be too young to remember 1999, right? Probably. Oh, was like, like, I was like five. Yeah. <laughs> uh, ouch. <laughs> and, uh, and the Y2K issue, because people believe and have believed for quite a while 
well that um, the world would have come, many, some people in fact, that the world would have come to an end in the year 2000, or even that the digital system would have had an impact just on moving from 1999 to 2000. That didn't right. happen. But the movies and everything that mm. makes some people disregard issues like these, we're now living those movies. Yeah. In the sense that we talk about the fires and what has been burnt, but if you start to see the pictures that have been emerging of the areas that the fire is no mm -hmm. is no out, mm -hmm. and you are seeing what looks like a nuclear wasteland, yeah. and then comes a hurricane season next year, any thoughts about when the next Category Five will hit? Oh boy, why? Let's have a bio, man. My little <laughs> zinc and them thing there, them because <laughs> the way it's going, it seems that the environment's so unstable. Yeah. I think we should be in a state of constant readiness, not to say, okay, probably next five years, and then some next five years may wait, and I think we should all just um, button down, uh, stock up, um, mm -hmm. do what we can from now, prevention better than cause. <laughs> So. Well, we already caused it, so um, well, you know. there you go. <laughs> in, in, <laughs> now, in terms of as we are closing off the segment, there's a thing that we always do: say, ten days from now, what should Jamaicans be speaking about? Um, oh, yeah. Oh, sorry. That, no, that's that's that. <laughs> ten days from now. Yeah. Um, what's that issue? Which ten days from now? We should be focused. Where's the oil? Yeah. We where's need to figure out where's the oil. Where's the I still have not heard anything about it. You know, where's the oil? Uh, you mean the oil from the ground? No, oh, Petrodome. Um, <laughs> Big man. Yo, yeah, you couldn't just, just say yes. <laughs> you couldn't just say yes. What is it I keep telling you about speaking in brackets? You couldn't just say, yeah, man, the oil from the ground, like crude oil that we're right, going to discover right. yeah. um, somewhere in Jamaica. All right, so 10, year, ten days from now, Where's the oil? What about you? Mm, I would say, because of that, I forgot mine, you know. <laughs> but, um, I would say 10 days from now, Jamaicans need to be talking about the link between mental health and crime. The link between mental health and crime. Mm -hmm. I think we should start on that one Come today on. and continue until day 10. Mm -hmm. And you, sir? Well, uh, I think that we should be talking about youth violence prevention. Crimes prevention yeah. among youth, yes. primarily among youth. Yes. Yeah, uh, and and there is a connection I would suggest to yeah. the link between mental mental illness and crime. Yeah. All right, gentlemen, mm -hmm. thank you very much. Mm -hmm. After this, you're going to see the beautiful Caroline Brown as she brings us CVM's Morning Edition. More sunrise after that. Mm -hmm.